for me, uh, when I have ran horror, I think the biggest thing is atmosphere and mood. Um, you can sit there and describe uh, one scene and really set the mood or ruin the game. I think also music. I use a lot of music. I dim the lights and do the whole candle thing. Uh, I think that especially is, helps with the setting and the mood. If you've got big bright lights and beer bottles everywhere or whatever on the table, unless that is where something's taking place, it doesn't really set that mood of horror. I think most importantly, a description helps attribute to these things too. So when you're describing something, you know, it's a late night, moonlit uh, silhouettes of uh, the night before, like strewn about the apartments, and there's, there's vomit in the floor, and uh, you feel this heavy presence of uh, the lack of sleep and things like that. When you're describing that kind of way, instead of, oh, you're in an apartment, it's messy, that helps the character to kind of get in that mindset to go play. So, so if you're all sitting at a table, there's candles going, and you're in this really deep scene where you know, you've come across this abandoned house, and there's no electricity, no form of light or anything like that. I think when you're in that scene, and then all of a sudden somebody's like, hey, who wants Chinese food? And they flip on a light switch. That breaks it. Game talk on the table. Uh, when you're talking over somebody that's describing a serious scene or a moody scene, that can break, break the uh, atmosphere and kind of ruin the game. As a gamer, too, as a player, when the DM can really set the stage for my actor to get onto the stage and interact uh, with the scene, I think that's the most important uh, thing as a player for me. And in that mood, the lighting, music, it's not the same song as playing, you know, for five hours of game. There's, there's different songs for different scenes or whatever. Not to take up the whole session, but it's transitioning that, but having that kind of pre-ready I think is important. As a player too, having in mind already that you, uh, you know, your guy is this way or that way. Um, so you're not trying to have to figure out your character as you're playing, uh, especially in a horror game. You can do that with D&D, &D, where you already know your character, uh, or you're, you kind of flesh them out as you're playing, and they evolve and grow. In a horror game, you're kind of expected to already have your flaws and your traits, and kind of your identity established. So you kind of take on the role of an actor uh, in horror games. I am big on role-playing and, and mood, even of rolling dice. if. If the players are playing and they, they fumble something and it's going to ruin an encounter or a scene that is very atmospheric or pivotal for the narration or story, I'm okay with not punishing them for that one. Uh, so fudging rolls or whatever. So I, I like those games better though. I like the, the, when the story is being told by all the players and the DM. So the DM or as the arbiter, you set a skeleton on the table and everybody kind of has putty and they're fleshing it out with you. I like to have a general idea of how the story is going to go and where I want it to go uh, with some exciting stuff in it, but I like for my players to step into those roles and help to flesh out the story. Everything is perfect until you decide it isn't. It's for my dad. <laughs>